Welcome to this monthly non-duality Zoom with Don Garland and me. Thank you for coming. Uh, please keep your microphones muted until invited to speak. This is being shared live on YouTube, so by asking a question, you are giving consent. We encourage you to raise your hand virtually after a brief introduction by unmuting yourself and turning on your camera. Alternatively, you can write your questions in the chat or on the YouTube chat, uh, and I will ask them on your behalf. Um, <clears throat> this is for entertainment purposes only. There's no advice being given. We're just uh, sharing in the mystery. And just gonna mute everybody quick. Okay. And okay, great. So sharing in the mystery, I was thinking, um, you know, when I was seeking, I was looking for the mystery, looking for an answer, looking for peace, beauty, truth. I think, uh, Keats says, truth is beauty and beauty is truth. And that's all you need to know, <laughs> something like that. Um, and it's not to be found in life. It is life. Life is the mystery. Life is the beauty. You know, there's no truth, of course. And there's nothing untrue. There's just what's appearing. There's just what is. And that is life. Life is what is. Life is the mystery. Does any truth, this is it. And um, there's just no way to get to that because it's always already. And there's a beautiful freedom in that. There's a, for this character, there's a relaxation and seeing beauty in everyday experience, in the dichotomies of life, the apparent struggles, there seems to be a beauty. And that's uncomprehensible. You know, I hear this loud trains going by <laughs> and my windows shake when these trucks go by and I'm laying there last night and just laughing. I can't explain it, but there's, there's something just beautiful about that, about a train going by, the simplicity I don't really use words like natural state or natural reality, but I get a sense for that this is just the default of without having concepts and ideas about how it should be, expectations or trying to make life into something else that doesn't exist. It's not an acceptance because there's no one to accept, but there's just emerging into what's happening. Um, and again, nobody merged into anything else because all there is is this. But that separation, that feeling like I need to create a better, a blissful, that seemed to be creating the tension. That seemed to be creating the false idea of separation 
or that I was the author of my life, that I was the doer. There's just what's happening. There's just these words being spoken and noisy traffic and distractions and somebody typing in YouTube really enjoy listening to your discussions. Thank you both. Um, it's just the immediacy. So anyway, that's all I got. Uh, somebody said, God, this is exactly what I need right now. Well, thank you. Anyway, um, so I will pass it to Don, Don Garland. Don, you're muted. Unmute yourself. Okay, start again. So I was thinking, yeah, so it's the end of polarity, it's the end of perfection in the sense of striving towards anything, trying to be better because it's all already perfect. And there's a freedom there to kind of embrace the shadow as well. So there's not this, um, need to be a certain way to be happy all the time to um to try to like positive thinking or toxic positivity stuff like that falls away so there's this um enjoyment of all of the experience that all of experience i'm talking really in the you know so um maybe after awakening we said talk about after and before but of course this is a timeless but there'll be a falling away of spirituality too. So maybe spiritual platitudes may fall away. So there's this freedom from um, having to be, um, well, may, maybe you prefer, a, instead of a Tagore or Rumi, prefer, you prefer a Charles Bukowski or a Baudelaire. So there's a falling away of that sort of spiritual, there's just, that and coming into where you are. So there's all of, all of, you know, you see that you can't be any other way and all of it. So the past has no power over you anymore. So the past is just an appearance and now it has, it does not, there's no identity with any of this, which is the freedom. And so that even suffering can appear, but it's, it's not happening to you because that identity has gone and there's no replacement for that there's just the intimacy and the coming into where you are so it's just being and so you're not defined by anything nothing defines you and all ideas of authority fall away and i don't know if i have anything else to add really so yeah thank, thank you don uh, so if you'd like to ask a question, feel free to raise your hand or type it in the chat. I have a question uh, for you, Don. Uh -huh. Is Kundalini good for anything? Well, it's good fun for a start. That is, if it doesn't, if you have a good Kundalini process, it can bring up repressed material. So, so maybe stuff that happened when you were in childhood, stuff that has been um that you can't remember might come to awareness so there might be issues that you become um, like codependency issues 
or maybe abuse memories if, if something like that is uh, repressed. So we sometimes um, it can bring up like a, there can be an integration of a lot of shadow material. So stuff that you're not aware of, parts of your experience start to get integrated. So there can be that. Um, it also um, is it's also just a fascinating phenomenon and makes you wonder more about what this is, you know. So even after awakening, because it can start before, it can start afterwards. Um, so yeah, it's, and if if it's beforehand, it can give you insights into this. Um, I mean, some of the bliss states, there can be periods of no mind that give you a sense of this. Um, so yeah, it's, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's interesting stuff. For some people, it's just painful though. Like, But I think that's the minority of people. Most people are really, uh, feel very grateful for the experiences and the process. And like I said before, if you can have isolated experiences or you can have an, a Kundalini awakening, which means that it kind of continues for life. So there are always gonna be exciting moments where things, you know, visions or whatever happen. And if you like that sort of thing, which most people do, it's quite entertaining and interesting. So, yeah. All right, I got another question in the chat. Uh, I guess we can both tackle this one. It says, can radical non-duality be dangerous? And if so, how? Do you, you want to go try that? For, uh, well, I, I'll, sure. Um, it's interesting because I know this is a popular subject at the, at the moment. I think Buddha at the gas pump had a whole episode on it uh, <laughs> the, the dangers the dangers of radical non-duality um and i think i even made a video responding in a way um i don't remember even what i said in the video but my uh, my thoughts at the moment are just that i guess if it's what is called applied non-duality which is if someone is just saying these words like it's just what's happening let somebody in um <clears throat> and uh there's no me there's no you uh a lot of people misinterpret it as there's nothing to do which is not what it says it just says there's no you um and this kind of turning into a belief system or philosophy and I imagine that could be dangerous, uh, though I don't know anybody that has uh, been hurt by it personally. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but see, it's just a misunderstanding. Um, it's like, uh, I think I heard um, Ram Das maybe say something like, um, the starving children are just this but so is your desire to feed them so in other words you don't just say well the starving is just this so there's not nothing i can do this it's just what's happening you see because helping someone is also just what's happening it's this is all inclusive it is uh nothing apart from what is so helping not helping uh going to therapy not going to therapy um dealing with your problems avoiding your problems it's all this so this is not a prescription it's just a description so uh i think if it's being misunderstood and with all due respect to who, whoever Rick Archer was interviewing, uh, I think that entire thing is a misunderstanding of what's being said. Um, and that's that's all I got on that question. Well, 
radical non-duality makes a lot of people going around saying it is what it is, which <laughs> should be banned. Um, yeah, well, I mean, and the same sort of issue with saying, you know, it's just a story. I don't think people have a choice in a way, like they, you know, it's natural to model something that they see as an ideal state, even if they know it's not ideal. So there is a tendency to minimize your experience then and see, well, what's the point? Um, but it's obviously it's not saying that, you know, minimize it and invalidate it because it's not who you are. But the thing is, that's what is appearing. And actually, it, in a sense, the physical that's appearing holds all the effects of that so you know so the trauma of the you know every everything that's happened has an effect here is being lived out and if it's not consciously known it's going to be acted out so your mind may be empty you may be feeling great no suffering but you might be going around doing things that you don't even realize you're doing so you're acting out the old patterns without actually knowing it mentally so I think it's inevitable that there's a tendency just to kind of to when there's things said like um therapy just makes the prison a little bit more comfortable <laughs> then it kind of also minimizes that because transformation can be really big in therapy as well I mean it and and it, it's a you know so it's it's a difficult one because people see it as a fix you know it fixes everything and it really doesn't, it has no comparison anyway. It doesn't compare, to, of course, it doesn't compare to all these, you know, work you could do or whatever, but, you know, but I can't see how we could get beyond that. Once you say it, people are going to imitate that. It's unconscious. I think it's compulsive. It's, but it's nobody's fault, you know, um, but yeah it's worth saying it's worth bearing in mind because I wish I wish I had done stuff earlier so I you know known stuff that I know now so we have a hand raised from Matt's yeah good evening um Actually, I was quite interested in what uh, Dawn was just saying, because that is kind of new to me, because I've been listening quite a lot to this radical non-duality speakers for some time. However, my, my question now is going back to Walter. And so it's not that I'm arguing something now. I just want to push around a little bit and see what, what happens. So you said when it's misunderstood, there could be a problem, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but is there such a thing? Then, then it seems like that could, it could be correctly understood, but is there such a thing as understanding radical non-duality? No, but, oh, sorry, Walter, you? <laughs> either one, either one, please, no. Oh, please. no, it's, <laughs> well, I'll just say, um... <laughs> Yeah, it's not about understanding, misunderstanding, or anything like that. But like, for example, if if I was to turn on my YouTube and start and and you know and and I'm suggesting that what I what's being spoken of is what's called radical non-duality, and then I start saying there's nothing you can do. Uh, there's you know there's there's no point in going to therapy or dealing with your problems because there's just this and it's already the script is written and not, I just start spouting all this stuff you know and somebody listens to that like it's some kind of advice and then you know I could see um, how someone could be hurt by that um, so th I feel like that would be a misrepresentation of the so-called message Agreed. But what I'm what I'm suggesting, just just to just to have a look at it. I'm not I'm not trying to, you know, say that uh, I'm right and someone is wrong or anything. I just wanted to look at it when some when some of the you know most respected non-duality speakers speak. That could also be 
and taken in like that. And and it will be, I would say, because uh, you know the the mind will try to grasp and things. Even if this said a thousand times, there's nothing to grasp. The mind will try to grasp it. Uh, it seems to me. So so it, it doesn't have to be someone who is misrepresenting it. It could be the highest quality speaker, and it would be misunderstood. But I'm saying it like like I know something, but I, it is a question. We are discussing it. Well, if you, I, I think also if you're not bringing in what your day to day living experience is like, it's a skewed view of this because actually life just goes on as before. It's 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 slightly different as in there's no location here and there's that intimacy, but but really like you know relationships are the same. You know everything's the same essentially. So you're not you know this is a performance at the end of the day. This isn't how I hang out with my mates. This isn't how we talk. You know like it's, it'll be different. You're still getting you're still gonna you know associate the message with the person at the front. And it's it's not real, it's just not. So, and the mind will always try to understand anyway. Like, so I just don't think there will be damage from this. And I don't see any other way. It's just one of those things you speak about. And some people will find themselves acting, you know, in accordance with what they hear because that's what we do. Maybe that's pessimistic. Maybe, I don't know, but maybe I'm wrong. I would I would say that I have seen that happen, and also maybe in myself also, uh, seeing it afterwards, you know, not while it was going on, but but uh, definitely I, I I think I well definitely, but I, I I think I have seen that happen on people. So it's not just it's not just uh, speculation now. It, it 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 could matter this kind of stuff. But if people were free in the sense of it wasn't compulsive, they wouldn't be seekers for the rest of their They wouldn't be sitting watching these guys speak for years and years and years. I mean, what a waste of fucking time. Like, it's the same message over and over again. Like, it's, and there's no, no way you could persuade someone to pull away from that, to go back, you know, because you can minimize awakening. You can say it is nothing, there's no change. You know, why would you want this? Anything to minimize it, they'll still want it. They'll still want that because it's a mystery, because they don't can't access it, even though it's there, you know, every with everyone and it's already the case. But it's the seduction of the words, the seduction of the mystical language, everything and nothing is so seductive. It sounds so impressive to a seeker, but it's literal. It's it's like saying, oh, you know, I've got blue paint on the wall is as exciting as that you know who cares it's really but even that sounds seductive so I think there's no getting beyond that except when it kind of collapses so you're buggered no that's terrible that's a really bad message maybe not maybe some people can drop it I don't know but you know like maybe I'm put, I, I, this will be my last but uh, you, you even said you even said um you know they want it or something like that but but you know in a way we know that there is nothing you can get so so this wanting it i know what you mean of course and i and i am there myself or have been there i know exactly what you mean but but still in one sense it is known that this uh, this wanting is never going to be satisfied you know unlike if you are you know um, enjoying some kind of music, you want to really go to the concert and then you come to the concert and actually you are satisfied for a little while. You get what you wanted or you wanted a Mercedes and you get the Mercedes and then you, yeah, you have it. <laughs> you can get what you want, but not in this. But in a way of speaking, you can, okay. It's not literal getting something, but, but okay. So the cessation of that desire, that striving, but, but also your perception is amplified. There are these things that come with that. You may have a period of bliss that's unremitting pace and for like a couple of years. I mean, who wouldn't, I don't know, give their left arm for that? Or, you know, like it, it, it's not in a way you can say there's nothing you can get and that's true, but there's still the fruits of this, which are very desirable. 
and they're not in, you know, I think life becomes more ordinary as this goes on and it becomes a new normal and life sucks sometimes and they're suffering. There's all sorts of shit that goes on. So, you know, but it's still, whatever you say about it, there's nothing you can get. It's still seductive. It's just. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll leave it for others now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jack Saturday asked, is it accurate? that no one has any choices. I would say, Jack, that uh, there is no one to have a choice, to not have a choice. There's just what is, there's just what's happening. And, you know, I heard someone say something like, we're doomed to make choices. <laughs> we don't have a choice but to make choices. Choices happen. Uh, you know, I chose to do this meeting, I guess, but that's just what happened. There was, there's no one in here formulating choices. It's just what's happened. It's like my eyes blinking and um, my heart beating. It's choices being made. It, it just all seems to be what's happening. Do you have any thoughts on that? Don? Yeah, well, it doesn't, it just doesn't mean an indifference to life, you know, like you have a success, it's like, wow, cool. And, you know, it doesn't make the difference that people maybe think it does, like it doesn't take away, it's, you know, it doesn't change anything that in a sense, it's, it's not, to me, it's not worth dwelling on, like, and also, it can be understood philosophically, if you look, you I mean, you don't really, you know, you can't really trace something back to your original cause or whatever. So, you know, I wouldn't worry about it. It doesn't have some depth. You know, it sounds like it detracts from the beauty of life or the identity or something like that, but it really doesn't. So you never did, but but your life story is still interesting to you and still important. And just, you're not getting, you're not deriving sustenance from that you're not deriving an identity from that so that's the freedom in itself as well so i mean but it just sounds very unattractive the the no doership if you're i think to a seeker it can do anyway maybe it doesn't to everyone because not because there's freedom in it as well but anyway thank you uh micah jump jump right in buddy yeah yeah, similar things like uh, about like free will and choice that they has been some research and evidence that there is no free will and choice. But they, I have heard also about like research that after giving the information to people that there is no free will, they easily use it as an excuse to cheat and do something like that and i'm also like like uh, in the radical non-duality meeting when there is said very, very strictly that there is no free will and choice and after that they have maybe said that donations are very welcome so i have i have used that as an excuse that okay there seem not to be a donation today so so that's they, that's what's just happening. So is, is there like a paradox that like there's no free will and choice, but still, uh, still uh, like donations and that kind of things are uh, like appraise, appraise, like, no say something about that there is some paradox going on um, you got that done i didn't really understand the paradox <laughs> that was going i was going to ask. I, I didn't know that it made people lie more that's interesting uh <laughs> fascinating i wouldn't have thought that it it would but i don't know what the question was either like well, the bit about donations I didn't quite get. So no, no, like like they said that there's no free will and choice that you you cannot make any choice. 
and but and people are using in different things that as an excuse to like now now if i'm cheating then i have had no choice to cheat or do these kind of things and similarly like about uh, like okay. if it okay. says right. very yeah in that that way i wonder if it's like a post rationalization then because i mean for most people cheating and you know you're either more comfortable with that or not like everybody's got the propensity to become more sociopathic over time but I don't think you can just switch it on and switch it off like that if you've got you know a conscience you've got a conscience so I don't see how that just that idea a, a, you know a cognitive idea idea in the head is going to turn you suddenly into this free person who can you know steal and do all this shit you know um I think like when it comes to like ethical stuff is much more a case of repression because unless you're a narcissist or a sociopath or a psychopath it's when you're not really in touch with what's going on physically in terms of emotions and stuff you are not safe in a sense whether you're coming from the perspective of a, of a predator or victim you know you're you can't be trusted the whole way because you're not seeing what's going on so I, I really don't think just because someone tells you that it, Maybe I'm wrong though. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but you know, yeah. Good luck with that one, you know. <laughs> like anyway. I just bring it back to the fact that there's no one to have free will or not have free will. There's just what's happening. And it's always been that way. So, you know, if all of a sudden hearing there's no free will makes you not want to donate to somebody's YouTube. Uh, you know, then that's just what's happening too. But if before, you know, you were more generous and you had a different way of being when you thought you had free will, then that was just what's happening. But this is, again, not a philosophy. It's not to be applied. It's just a description. It's just talking about life as it appears. Yes, I, I got it. This was about this... Um somebody talking about this research it went that just afterwards when people heard that that there is no free will then they little bit acted differently but it may like i i get the point that you then this cheating may become like first that okay now it's okay to cheat because i don't have to uh this Free will, but the the nature that you have or character will evidently go as it goes. But I, I don't know. It just it was just this funny idea that I recent re, recently heard that I I was wondering about. Nothing so serious. I just think it's terrifying how malleable we are. Like if you need all you need to do is hear that and you turn into like you know like how much does it take just to tweak a population like they they hear that and suddenly all right well i'll cheat now do you know i mean because well that's that's so easy then isn't it but it always has been but it, it's just shocking when we realize how little i mean the media and everything else just to switch people's view of anything and change behavior we're just malleable it's terrifying it's really terrifying but anyway it's kind of funny as well. So, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Thank you both. <laughs> Thank sure. you. Jason, come on in. Hello. Hello. Oh, hi. Um, oh. Hi. Can you see me here? I'm here. Yeah, um, I can see you. Hi. So, in the beginning, Don was saying about the fading way of spiritual seeking. And I can say that's happening here for sure. You know, sometimes I go back and listen to these Buddhist teachings that I used to be into. And now it's like, what the hell are they talking about? Like, it's so confused and whatever. And now, all the, but now all the seeking seems to be going into this non-duality uh, speaker thing. And uh, I'm kind of hoping at some point that will fade away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But uh, glimpses, I said glimpses have happened here. So I feel like I can relate or understand what you're talking about. 
But I do notice that there are times when that kind of uh, applied non-duality will happen. There'll be some thought, well, this is just what's happening. You know, I don't use it like as a justification for anything, like you're talking about cheating or whatever. It's not a justification, but I notice that it kind of creeps in sometime. But um, the thing I want to bring up really was lately there's been like this total lack of motivation and like complete directionlessness. Like, like every choice is equal value. Like if I go in this direction or that direction, it's kind of all the same, but it's not like freedom. It's not like I'm so free or I'm so fulfilled that it's all the same. It's kind of more just like this bland, empty, like empty in the normal sense, not in emptiness, but you know, it's just like a dissatisfied blandness. I don't know. Anyway, if you could say something about that, I'd appreciate it. Go for it, Don. Oh, <laughs> well, it's, it's, where have you gone? You're not, <laughs> anyway, um, it depends where it's coming from because it sounds like description of emptiness as well, but you say bland. Um, so I don't know what else is going on for you if you're getting glimpses uh, because, you know, in the awakening to emptiness, there is just that desirelessness and it's not particularly pleasant. I mean, there's nothing to gain from that at all. Maybe a cessation of desire. Um, it could be, I don't know. I don't know anything about you enough to know. I mean, it could be yeah. like what you go, but like, true. like well, what's, I mean, is, is it like, do you feel deadened or like, or do you just feel kind of nicely indifferent or it's just... Pretty, it's kind of hard to say. I mean, even last weekend, there was like the emptiness of emptiness, so to speak. I don't know how to, you know how to say it. And then everything kind of solidified again back into the normal way of being. And now it's kind of like this, this like apathy or whatever. It's like, yeah, I don't know. Even like the emptiness, it, I mean, what's the attraction for that or whatever? Well, if you're, if, I mean, if you're like, like just, yeah, if you're like, <laughs> going through a crazy time it can be a relief like it can be but um is it is it nice place to be is there anything nice about this place to be or or do you feel like a solid it is place? nice it is like in the moment like in the now or whatever it's uh -huh. very nice but then there's this thought of the future you know okay. it's like oh i need to do something okay but i don't yeah, really yeah. know what to do yeah, yeah. okay because so yeah. maybe you're just like if, it, if it's happening more and more often, maybe you're just sliding into this, you know, like it's just breaking down and your motivations go away and it'll come back again, like hopefully. I mean, that's kind of, you know, I think things start to kick in again when you're like seeing of love and, you know, start to integrate this. It's like, I don't know. I'm trying to <laughs> I don't know. It's all right. It's not, it's it's not like I it's not like I really need an answer or anything. No, no, I guess I, I just know. wanted to, I just I wanted to be is. involved in the conversation here somehow. Okay. Oh, just... <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. And I appreciate Walter too. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jason. I went through something similar. I can just say that. I, I didn't really have much to say on that. Um, I try to avoid having all my answers just be uh, it's just what's happening so that's why i i thought don might have more to say on that but i i did um yeah so i went to this where i was just doing i guess whatever i felt like you know and i also had this freedom because um it was during uh lockdown so i i wasn't going to work at the time and um and I just had, you know, I was just tuning into sort of um, my body and just like, what do I really want to do? Because I was kind of very disciplined and I, I had a, a regiment I was following. And I said, well, why don't I try this? Just sort of do what feels right, you know, and, and that. And it was an interesting, I guess, phase I went through or experiment in a way. Um, and it just kind of happened. And I guess it was freeing, you know, because, well, I don't know. It was a very spacious kind of empty time 
you know, when I didn't feel a lot of demands um, in, internally or externally to, to do anything. So it was a lot of freedom to play around with that. But of course, that was just what was happening. And um, then I kind of getting back into more discipline, which I like. You know, I like um, having a routine. But yeah, that's about all I can say. Nothing too insightful. But uh, yeah, I did have a period where I was just like, whatever, yeah. whatever I feel like, uh, you know, within reason, obviously. But, you know, uh, it's interesting. So, let's see, we have some questions in the... Jason, you want to say anything else about that? I see you laughing hysterically. I'm just laughing. I'm just laughing. There's, no, there's not even anything to laugh about or whatever yeah. laughing. Just, it just happens, whatever. But uh, I, I like what you're saying. It's nice to hear. Do you need yeah, to be just... motivated? It like, uh, doesn't matter. Isn't it? Well, the thing is, I'm living in my car, right? And it's going to be winter soon. And I kind of like need to find a place to live and, you know, get my life together again, whatever. Okay. So it's not like, you know, so there's some pressure, but I just can't get motivated to do anything. So it could be totally psychological. You know. Yeah, well, it, it I makes, mean, I'm sure it is. It makes sense then. Like, even if the motivation is all gone, but like, okay, so there is that thing looming. I mean, that's a real that is a real problem and it's going to come up. So it will, it will just be a thought stream annoying pain in the ass thing until then maybe, you know, I don't know. You know, it's, you know, I don't know. It depends when this stuff yeah. happens, doesn't it? I, I was the same, I didn't have to do anything at the time. So I could just melt into that, no motivation, just so not worry too much about anything, you know, so. <laughs> I just I just laugh at the absurdity of life sometimes. It's just everything just seems so ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But uh, thank you. <laughs> All right. We got a question in the chat it says, hi, what's radical non-duality? Is it Tony Parsons spiel? Hmm. What is radical non-duality? Well, <laughs> I think uh, one of the maybe things that, well, I think all it is is saying there's no you, really, in a nutshell. Uh, um, it has nothing to do with Tony Parsons. Um, he wasn't the first to say that. So, um, and, and I think another maybe component is it, it's not a teaching, it's not offering practices and methods. Um, I sound like a broken record, but it's just a, a description of what is. And no one knows what is. <laughs> but it's just what appears to be. Uh, and uh, Do you have anything on what radical non-duality is? Yeah, there's nothing to add to that, is there? We all know. <laughs> we all know. You've heard it. I guess everybody here has probably heard. Yeah, we know what it is, don't we? I don't know. Yeah. Is yeah, no self, I'll do. It's just is it is it just so it's just this, it's just energy or space. Sorry to to talk. Am I is that all right to chat? Oh yeah, well that's your question, right? Oh yeah, that's my oh yeah, sorry, that was my question because yeah. You know, radical non-duality, I thought that was comes from Tony because I listen to him a lot. And I know, I know Gail. So I just think it just sounds like radical. It means that it's more outside the box than um, a lot of other non-duality uh, talkers because Tony says like this, that this, this is a radical message. That's all. And I just wondered if that's what you, you were saying about non dual non radical non duality because it's all nothing really isn't it Are you in it? well it's what? just saying there's nothing you can i mean i, I guess the difference nothing. is we are, there's nothing you can do that i mean what makes it radical non duality it's not teaching right so no it just means yeah yeah and 
yeah so there's not there's nothing to be gained by listening to it there's nothing in it for you in a way so it's not selling anything yeah that's better though i think <laughs> you know, at the same time at the same time it, it is in a way i mean it's still you know it's it's still a something right you're watching and it's you're getting views <laughs> you know it's but it's not actually it's about as innocent as it gets on that in that subject right in that well it's not a subject obviously but it's yeah so i guess that's why it's called radical i don't know I, you, no i don't know <laughs> No, I, I know just like when Tony, you know, when Tony's talking, I think like he tried that that people will keep taking this to the mind time and time again. And I, I've, I've, I went to see Tony for eight, for eight years and I never actually listened to a word he was saying. Yeah, he was saying the same thing over and over again every month. And then one day I actually listened and it took that. Because I, I thought, my mind thought it knew better than what he was telling me. But it, in fact, it was actually energy. It was like space that I recognised more than anything, than any talk ever, really. So it's just a feeling for me. So there was a kind of letting go in the meeting then? Yeah, and, and like radical means if there's nothing you can do, it makes me like feel, oh, well, I, I feel more relaxed with that, you know, okay. when, when you say, because it's radical and you say, well, there's nothing you can do anyway. So that my mind will drop a bit because it gives up, it thinks, oh, what's the point? And there's nothing you can do anyway. So it might be a bit easier to get it next time. <laughs> All right. Okay. That sounds really yeah. good. So it's a good, it's a good message, actually. Well, the message is there's no you. It has nothing to do with doing or not doing. Yeah. Doing apparently ha happens. The message yeah. is this is no, no thing, nothing, being everything. Yes. There's no separation. There are no individuals. There's no one at this meeting. There's no, no. one speaking. There's no one listening. There's no one asking questions. There's no one typing on YouTube. It's just what's appearing to happen. That's the yeah. message. That's it. Yeah. So yeah. everyone, everyone keeps hearing this as there's nothing I can do. There's no I. Yeah. There's just doing, oh. apparently happening. <laughs> you see. Uh, uh, well, I'll answer this other question here. It sort of ties in yeah. from, from Daryl. It says, Walter, when you say there is no one in here, if there is no one, then where is the here you are re referencing? Uh, the, 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 here, the here is just uh, just talking about this, this apparent body, this body-mind organism. There's no, there's no individual in here. No, I, th I think when you said you, you see, that's where I just, uh, you know, you you see, I did see, and I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, but when you just says to me, you see, yes, I do see, so I know what you mean, I sense that, because I've had uh, glimpses of, of just being everywhere and nothing and not being able to find myself ever, because it was so quick it was like a flash of I couldn't explain it but then when you said you see that's what it is it's it's seen isn't it but not knowing more for me <laughs> if you yeah, know yeah, I, I mean. think I think that just I have a yeah. habit of saying you know you see I don't know yeah you see I, th I think that's a big one for me I see because when I when I was in the hairdressers this has happened quite a few times sitting there for hours I used to look in the mirror and I couldn't find myself but it was a seeing you see because I was seeing through my eyes and when I tried to look I went oh my god and I got quite frightened because I couldn't sense myself I was everywhere but I was nowhere and it, and it, I, it, it was so uh, I can't explain it I went oh my god oh my god like, where am I you know 
So when he says I see, I see for me, if that makes sense. But it isn't a sense, it's a scene as well, isn't it? Yeah, it can be. Gonna... Can be, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. <laughs> if Daryl wants to jump in, love to chat with you, buddy. Um, uh, we got one from Kingdale Clark. It says, Walter, if I can ask you a question, what's your thoughts on Kundalini from a non-duality perspective? Is it a real thing? <laughs> I, I don't know. It's not, I, it's not uh, something I have experience with. Um, so I can't really speak about it. Um, but Kundalini would be just like anything else. It's just what's apparently happening to no one by no one. Uh, but for more insight into Kundalini, I would refer to Dawn because she does have experience with it and knows about it. But um, yeah, so that's why I would defer to her on questions about Kundalini because it's not my area of expertise at all. It's, it's not something that has come up in my life. So I, I don't have any insight into that. But it's as real as, as anything else. Might be more entertaining though. I think it must sound like pure nonsense to someone who hasn't experienced that though. Like, it must be very easy to dismiss. But anyway, it's just. Kim Roberts said she had Kundalini. I think everybody. I'm oh, sorry, Kim. Yeah. This is funny how to Kundalini. It sounds like um, a Chinese, it's like a meal or something. <laughs> like a what? Sounded like a meal, like a, a menu where you have to say, <laughs> oh, I'll have a Kundalini, please. <laughs> have one of those. Do <laughs> you <know> those. <laughs> Uh, I, I, have you? I've had a kundalini. I thought it what? was frightening, actually. I've had a couple. Like, like, do you want to share? Like, was it? Were they one-off experiences or? Well, no. Well, my this is how how uh, how I had. This is how I came into all this. Anyway, I was in the garden one day and I vanished. Uh -huh. I, didn't, I hadn't heard of non-duality, I didn't know what it was. This is about 14 years ago, in my late 40s. I hadn't got a clue what it was. I, was, I didn't know what had happened to me. But all, all I can experience is it as like a burning. It was as if I was on fire. Oh, uh, right, okay. Um, a blaze of, there was nothing. It, it, I, I had like, um, you know, like a tingling all over me. Yeah. And then I went into the blaze, uh, fire, and then this was this happened for over about a weekend or more. Every time I closed my eyes, I wanted it to go, and then it went into a, like a light. And my whole body, and my head just went. There's no, it, there was nothing I could do. I wasn't in control of it. It, right. it, it, it just happened and my whole head just went into light and I disappeared in the universe, basically. And then as I had to come down, I sort of went into a darkness and into a fear. Oh, okay, right. 
yeah so and I can't really remember a lot more um and then and then I remember that all the pains in my body went and then I, I just just sensed that the end that the energy started to turn the other way for some reason um what do you mean but, I don't know because it as I was watching it, I sensed that energy was going one way and then it, and then it went, it, it oh, was yeah. going on plug boys and then it just changed. The energy started to change through my, through my body. Um, and it just went all through my cells. And then I started to have like, started to sort of have like um, things that seemed to be loading down into my brain. That oh, seemed okay. weird as well. I couldn't really explain it, but basically that was it. Right. And okay. then when I read it in books, after that I'd I'd met somebody from um from a Harry Krishna temple, and I think they were into all Kundalini's and Indian Master and all that. And I was led through that way. Um, so I was with them for a bit, yeah. So wow, okay. yeah, and not normally. What about you? Which you sort of similar. You know, it was just kind of ongoing, like, I mean, it's just, so uh, the awakening, the, the seeing of non-duality was 2012, so I had a Kundalini awakening then, and then I had another Kundalini awakening four years ago, it's kind of stayed with me, so it's kind of like your ex experience of light and visions and other phenomena yeah. arising at certain yeah. times, and then other times not very much, and so it just, yeah, but it's very common around awakening it just is and, and I think it's common when most most people I've I've met and talked to to have some experience of something like that they may not call it that it's I mean maybe that's just me but I just seem to bump into people all the time and they're actually if you approach them the right way they're very open about it so but they may reframe it maybe in a Christian context or some other or just they don't want to give it a name like Kundalini because you know because it's got baggage with it maybe I don't know. Yeah, it just seemed to me it was like a burning off of something. Something was going on beyond my. Uh, I had no, no. There's nothing I could have done. You know, it just happened. Yeah, so it's pretty intense. And yeah, it was, and um, I got quite frightened, and then I was okay, and I don't know how I got through. I think mine happened in about 2003 or something like that. So well, it was quite okay. a long time ago now. Um, yeah, but that's what, from, from that time, I, I've never been the same. It changed my life quite a lot, really. Never been the same since, really. <laughs> I think yeah. that's what opened me up. Yeah. So good changes, obviously. Like, um... Yeah, because I've let it's led me on to go to you know non duality. I used to go to Muji first, and then I my friends said, Oh, you know, they were going to see Tony, so that's when I started to go down to London to see Tony. And then uh, since then, I've been listening to other non duality speakers, and that's where I've met you there, haven't I? Yeah, yeah, I remember very nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> saw yeah. you in July, didn't I? Yeah, so yeah, right now, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, but Tony doesn't talk about Kundalini's or anything, does he? Oh. Just uh, he has not experienced it like that. It all depends, but um, I think I, th I think I read the book by Eckhart Tolle, and he he what happened to him was similar to what happened to me. Oh, the, the power thing, the yeah, the power now. I think it was similar. Yeah, after that, was, I was, I was, like that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> got a, I got a few questions in the chat. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Jason says, thank you, Walter and Don. It does seem that there is something going on energetically from participating in these meetings. It's not really the words or the answers. All right. Then we got Chris. It says, if there is no one just what seems to be happening, who or what is aware of the fact that there is no one, just what seems to be happening? Well, I would say there is no one to be aware that there's just what's happening. That's just what's happening. 
I mean, just like anything else, it doesn't matter the scenario. I have another question here from King Dale Clark that says, um, what can you say about crime from a non-duality perspective? If there's no free will, what can you say about those apparent individuals who commit what would be considered a horrific crime? Uh, there's, I mean, there's literally no one doing anything. So yeah, there's no one here that's aware of, <laughs> you know, these words. It's just what's happening. Um, there's no one here that has a, a philosophy or a, a take on life or has an opinion on horrific crimes. So I don't know what to say about horrific crimes or, or any of this, but it just goes back to there's no one here. You know? Horrific crimes happen, but there's nobody doing them. And those apparent people, those body-mind organisms might end up in jail. That's just what apparently happens. Or maybe they get away with it. That's just what apparently happens. It's a very simple message. Um, do you have any opinion on uh, horrific crimes? <laughs> well, it's, it's about as relevant to this as anything else, drinking a cup of tea, um, whatever. I mean, yeah, there's no one doing that. I mean, it's not about good and evil in this. It's, it's just whatever's happening. <laughs> It doesn't mean it's okay. And like you say, they might end up in prison, they might go to hell, but actually, <laughs> I don't, not that there is one, but actually in all the research, it doesn't matter how you live your life, the hell experiences got, um, got nothing to do with how your mental state is or whether you're a bad person or a good person. So there you go. It's random. <laughs> Just, very comforting. If you're a major criminal, it's very comforting. <laughs> yeah and unfortunately back to the kundalini that there is a lot of baggage and um i think i had that myself because i checked out kundalini yoga which is not the same as kundalini and uh yogi bhajan and 3ho and oh, yeah. there's a whole almost a, a cult around kundalini yoga so um, i guess whenever i would hear that word i would associate it with this other thing um so i had to learn you know the difference so but i think there was some prejudice when i would hear the word i would think that this is what we were talking about so uh you know, I had to have an open mind that it, it wasn't actually this anything to do with Yogi Bhajan and all this stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, we got another one here. Uh, this is pertaining to Kundalini. It says, probably like a lucid dream. If you haven't had one, it's hard to imagine there is such a thing. Yeah, I would have thought it sounds completely nuts. Um, but it's actually the same as any other experience because well, however however extreme it is, it's just ordinary to you. I mean, it might be exciting afterwards or whatever. So it's like the experience of light sounds interesting and then it's just light. I mean, it's just, again, it's there's an ordinariness to that. There's an ordinariness to being in hell. There's an ordinariness to, I don't know, hearing voice, uh, you know, or see, I don't know, seeing whatever it is you're seeing or hearing or, um, yeah, and I can't remember the question. <laughs> it was just a comparison to lucid dreaming. That Oh, yeah, yeah, lucid dreaming. You, you yeah. have to ha have one to know. Yeah, because I think there was a thing recently about, uh, yeah, lucid dreaming, um, yeah, your parts of your brain are switched on and that. So if you haven't had one before, you, you don't realize what it's like. But um, the last one I had was about a week and a half ago. And it was, I was 
realized I was awake in the lucid dream and just realizing there's no me in the lucid dream, which was quite interesting and experiencing that because I never really thought about that before in a lucid dream. Are you awake in a dream? You know, but it's, yeah, it's quite interesting. So um, yeah, lucid dreams are very different. There's a lot more, a lot more fun. Um, if you're not too busy doing debauched things in lucid dreams, which a lot of people do, like that you can experience other realms and all sorts. So. Yeah. Oh, we got Daryl with his hand up. Hello. Hello, Daryl. You can hear me great. Hey, Walter. I can I, hear I you. Do you want to put your camera on? Uh, hang on. No, actually, I can't right now. That, is that okay? That's fine. Yeah, no, no pressure. Okay. I'm just actually, yeah, I'm doing like 10 things at once. But I wanted to chime in. I want to thank you for bringing us back to the subject when people were, someone was asking about what, what non, uh, what the radical non-duality is. And it is, it's a very um, radical message to say that no one is here when you're literally looking at someone telling you that. So, I mean, I'm not sure why people are confused why that's not a radical message. If you try to have this message with, with the average person walking down the street, they're gonna try to connect you with some sort of insane uh, asylum or something because this message is not only radical, it makes no damn sense to the ordinary regular human being, whomever that may be. So, I mean, I, I, I totally get it. I, I, I understand what, what people are saying, but I think we kind of, we lose sight of the fact of how much, how, how much nonsense this, this, this message presents to most people. If someone had said to me, uh, before I had this glimpse or this shift or whatever that this is that happened, that you're that you're there's there's no one, and that everything is just happening. I would say, what the hell are you talking about? I would I would probably end the conversation and say this person is about insane or on his or her way to being insane, and I would not want to engage with that person. Okay, now jumping forward, <laughs> and what has happened to me, I can happily have the conversation with someone. Yes, I can say that both are true. I'm, you're looking at me and you're seeing this physical person talking to you, yes, that's happening. And what I'm also saying is, is that that's not totally what you seem to think it is. Uh, you seem to think this is a solid individual talking to you, uh, meat and flesh. Yeah, I get that. But now there's another side of this. And this is where that radical piece comes in that you're telling me that both are true, that yes, you're seeing physical flesh, you're seeing what you think you're seeing, but then again, on another side of it, you're not really seeing that because there is no, no one, there is nothing. There's both, I guess, that's all. Just wanna jump in and put that in there for whatever it's uh worth. I also wouldn't get too hung up on the description. It's not what it's not what anything it said that's said about it does not capture this. It doesn't. So you're saying no me. It, the, the experience of you know formlessness or whatever. It's you, I mean it's so cliche to say you can't be put into words. It is not. So you, you're listening to a description. It can never capture this, and it really does defy that. I I just that's what's just hitting me. I know what's been said over and over again, but. That whole no me, it sounds fucking awful to be honest, but it's that's not how it's experienced at all. So anyway, I don't know why I just had to say that because it sounds sounds grisly to me, like thinking back as a seeker when I was a seeker, but um well well there we and somebody wrote Try telling that to the cops. Uh, you see, that's also a misunderstanding. There are no cops. You see, <laughs> I mean, the cops are just, are just what's apparently happening too. You see, uh, so there's no free will and choice. There's no one to have free will and choice. It's just what's apparently happening. So cops arresting a criminal and putting him in jail is just what's happening. 
again, it's not a philosophy. There's nothing to tell the cops. <laughs> if I get arrested, I get arrested. I mean, <clears throat> I know, you know, what's being said about Tony, for example, I, I mean, I've seen him stand up in front of a room of people and just say, there's no one in this room. And everyone's like, whoa, you know, but it's so obvious. There are no individuals. You clearly see bodies in that room that go by certain names and they have a name and form, you know, but there's no separate individuals. There are no people. You know, it's almost like a parlor trick to, to say that and, and blow everyone's minds. But there's no one here saying that. No. But even if there's no one saying that, there's still maybe a giving a shit about something or not giving a shit about something and worrying about something or not. Work. I mean, life is just ordinary too. It, it doesn't negate that. Like you say, the person, the, the relative from the absolute, that's kind of a bollocks distinction. It's not real, but it, it kind of helps to talk about it that way sometimes because otherwise you get it in a weird view. <laughs> Sorry, I just got to hit the mute all button. You'll have to unmute yourself, Don, okay? Okay. Okay. Right. Thanks. Just getting some noise there. <laughs> See, like I'm looking in the chat and there's a... Uh, Adult dating sites uh, being promoted on. <laughs> well, two for one. That's just that's just what's happening. Uh, oh, we got uh, Adam. Hi guys, can you hear me all right? Yeah. Yes, I can. I can hear you. I can see you. Um, I was just wondering, is can the me not come back? You know what I mean? Where it like kind of like separates and it seems like it's kind of detached from you and there's just what is, and then it kind of like comes back and then there's like a location of being in the body again, or is there more of like a balancing out to that? And do you want to go or is... oh, you take it there's when it's seen and you know some people talk about glimpses that the look at sense of look there's no sense of being out there or in here the sense of location here hasn't come back there is just no sense of location so the experience has not altered in that. um it's just been like that the whole time so i don't know about you walter um, so can you repeat the question sorry there was just a little external noise there so yeah so the sense of centeredness I guess you could say of being in the body for example can that does that leave permanently I guess in all cases because it, it seems like some of the speakers are talking from a knowing that there's nobody, like they've had a glimpse and realized that there isn't anybody really. And then this is just kind of like, seems like a positive reinforcement of that. Like a knowing there's no one rather than being no one. It's, it's 
the, the experience is just being like being pure spirit. There's no sense of weight or anything here. There's a lightness. There's yeah. nothing in here. There's nothing out there. It's, yeah. you know, it's just, so it's, it's, it's actually visceral. It's, it's on every dimension. It's not an idea or not. There is a knowing, but it's not just the knowing. It's actually experience. Yeah. That word is controversial in this, obviously, but because there's no one to experience that. But right. so it's very, if there's any doubt on the cognitive level, which can come up and be very persuasive, if you come back to the experience, it's just there is air here. I mean, there's nothing here. It's felt, it's known, it's, yeah. you know, and it's seen in the event. You know, initially it can be physically seen, it can be felt. And, so yeah, in, inside, some people have doubts about that, the sense of me or whatever. And I, I don't know, I can't speak for everyone, but that's my experience and that's my, as far as I understand it. I don't know if any, you know, some people have talked of sense of location coming back. I, that to me is me, but I don't know about you. But. Yeah, I just, um, so so you're saying can, can a sense of, me come back yeah yeah like it seems like people talk about glimpses like they've seen that there's not really anybody in here but that's it's like yeah it it's not a it's a it's hard to describe right it's almost like me is out there somewhere and i remember it like coming back and like that sense of centeredness and the physicality of everything is real again. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I I I, I have a hard time with that one because um, I put it like this: like uh, there's, there's there's no ownership. There's there's no owner. There's no possessor of a me, and there is no me to be possessed. But let's say it does come back. Like, who is it come back for? Yeah. Like, would it, yeah. it, I mean, who would own that me, that sense of a me? It's just, right. it, would just, it would just be what's happening for no one. So a sense of a me is just what's happening for no one. It's just what's appearing. It's just what's being felt. It's what's being experienced. You feel like a separate me. That's just... It, it's just what is, but it's not happening for anyone. There's, there are, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. There's yeah. no actual you that could have a sense of a me. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thanks, guys. Cheers. <laughs> All right. Do we have two hands? Oh no, those are the same hands, I think. Hey, Walter. 
Hello, Jim. I, I, there's something I want to ask Don. Don, may I talk to you for a minute? Yeah, yeah. Uh, earlier, I probably shouldn't bring this up. Uh, it's really off topic, but you were saying something about other realms. Uh -huh. um, oh, in relationship to the Kundalini, Kundalini discussion. Yeah. And <clears throat> I guess I, I'm not an expert in this, and I don't do this all the time, but I've had a lot of, of experience with the uh, what's called the psychic realm. Okay. My second, what my second wife was an extremely gifted uh, medium, yeah. who could bring so-called dead people here. You know, in other words, they're not dead; they're they're just in this other realm. Yeah, yeah, sure. And I think the part of that that whole thing that that affects me is like they talk about: there's no you, and the self, and the me disappears. I've had that too. The me, the the me dissolved once, but I was still here. And when I, I've spoken to my wives many, many times, I mean, God, I don't, I, I've even 50, maybe over 50 times over the years, you know, uh -huh. and they always appear exactly as the person they were here with the same memories, the same sense of humor, the same knowledge. It's, it's absolutely astonishing. And so when I think about the non-dual teachings, you know, and this thing about there's no you and there's no me, uh, it's funny as heck because <laughs> those people they're they're not dead i mean they're they're in that other realm their bodies are gone their their bodies perished but their personality and their self or, or their ego or whatever i want to call that is absolutely the same but, but it, except that, oh sorry <laughs> go, go ahead you wanted to say something well it is just but i mean it, i mean it, it doesn't make any difference in a way what you're saying because so th there'd be no me there as well as well so if there's a wakeness on on the other side say it's the personality okay so say we do survive death it, there can still be a sense of you know the the personality the memory and everything intact as you know from nde experiences but nobody owning that and and, and that's very often the experience in near-death experiences anyways so mm -hmm. there's there's still that I mean, maybe this is eternal. I mean, maybe it is, like you say. So it doesn't surprise me when you say that. I mean, what's what do you need a physical for? I mean, wh why? You know, we've got this idea we need a physical body. Like, how many people have had out of body experiences? It's just really common. And it, it, you know, you speak into it. it. Doesn't surprise me what you're saying uh, at all. But I mean. It doesn't mean, I mean, maybe you can be on, you know, maybe you can be, um, feel like a separate ego when you're dead. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But, but you, you, I mean, people experience them differently, don't you? So you experience your, you know, your wife as. as well, see, the, I mean, what's so amazing about all that is they're just always here. Um, oh, all right. Like even, even, so, I like, is it like. Do you sense? I mean, 20, are you talking twenty four seven, or 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 whenever you want to treat? Like, how does it emerge for you then? Well, they they come and go. They they visit. I call it visits. They okay, visit. all right, okay. What's, what I'm beginning to understand, I, I know that non duality is not about understanding, but I'm beginning to get it that uh -huh. in a sense, even if 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 there's another realm somewhere, it's almost like, exactly like this realm. It's an illusion. And then there aren't really individuals there. It's like this one, this one essence or this one energy, or this one life, or whatever we're gonna call that thing. The, the one nothing, okay? Right. <laughs> appearing, <laughs> appearing as Jim sitting here rattling his mouth, appearing as as my wife's coming to visit in various forms, usually in sleep. But but it's it's funny to think about it like that that <laughs> that we're all like. Like we're all, all all puppets in a way. Is it you know? is it nice though? Like just out of my own curiosity, is it re is it really nice to have that connection? Do you do you know? Do you is it kind of well? What happened when they died? When they when they crossed over my second wife uh -huh. when she crossed over, uh, I, because I I'd had some uh, okay. I don't want to go through all these psychic experiences. I actually was there when my brother-in-law died and he, and he was right there hovering above his bed and he began okay. talking to me. It was funny as that. It was like a, it was like a telepathic communication. So when my second wife died, she was the medium. I was a little un unhappy because I wasn't connecting with her. So I went to see a, 
a medium up on the boulevard there. And we had this reading. You know what a reading is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, she was like right there, like instantly right there. And uh, what's funny about all that stuff is, uh, I'm trying to think how to say this. Uh, uh, they come and go, they come in random ways. I mean, there's, there's so many ways. Oh, that's it. When she died, because she was still here, I didn't have that grief experience. I didn't go through this terrible grief oh, about loss. Oh my God, right, I lost my wife. Because she was always here. <laughs> right, no. I am. I even went right. to just for that, just for laughs. I went to some some grief meetings, some some uh, you know these grief meetings that people hold, and the people are sitting there like wiping and, and wailing and gnashing their teeth, and I'm sitting there almost laughing because my wife is still right here. She she didn't go anywhere. She's still right, right here. I didn't lose her, and so I felt a little stupid about going to these grief meetings, and. Uh, so because she's always here, I've never had that sense of, oh, I, I, uh, I lost my wife. So when my third wife died, I ha I've had three wives. So when she died, I, I did the same thing. I went to see a medium and she was like right there, like bam, right there. <laughs> so I've never had this gruesome experience of, of pain and sorrow and feeling sorry for myself or feeling like a loss because they're absolutely always here. Uh, I don't mean 24-7. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's interesting. Yeah, it is. But the, the, the thing is, I, from the non-dual perspective, I can see that it's, it's like the same, let's say, illusion. This side is an illusion, and so is theirs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, I don't know if people wake up in the, in the afterlife realm. I call it the afterlife. I don't know if they wake up in the afterlife realm or have realizations. I don't know because they have vastly different understandings and experiences that we have over here. For example, I, I said to my, my, my third wife, I said, so what do you do all, is that all day long? She said to me, Jim, we don't have day and night over here. <laughs> oh, right, okay. <laughs> Whoa, cool. <laughs> and and, and the, the medium who I was working with at, at a store, the medium and I said to her, so what's it like over there? What do you do all the day long? Tell us all about it. And she said to us very patiently and kindly, she said, Guys, you just won't understand it. <laughs> I, I, I can't tell you because you, your mind, your, your mind simply cannot grasp what it's like over here. For example, we, they don't have distance. There's no distance. Uh, I, I, it, it's, it's hard to explain. It. And I thought, okay, so in a way, their, their realm is vastly different than ours, but in another way, it's the same. They're individuals <laughs> living in a, in a, in a uh, let's say, an illusion. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. No. <laughs> when I think about this stuff, it's really funny. It's uh, from the non-dual perspective. Has your fear of death gone then? Experience and through really experiencing that. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Has your again? fear of death gone, or do you have a fear of death? Would you say you know just? Well, after I witnessed what happened with my brother-in-law, uh, who, who was right after he died, he, he had cancer and he died. He was floating. He was floating above his body uh, uh, near the ceiling. Okay. Right. Now I didn't actually see him. This is a this is a uh, telepathic or non-visual experience. But he be when he realized that I knew he was there, he began talking to me. <laughs> that was funny. And he and his wife, who was kneeling by the bed and so sobbing and oh, oh, he kept he kept telling him, "Patty, Patty, I'm up here. I'm right up here." <laughs> Right. I could I could hear him, but she couldn't. And yeah, I was yeah, tempted, yeah. I was tempted to tap her on the shoulder because I was standing right next to her. I was tempted to tap her on the shoulder and say, Patty, he's right up there. But I didn't. I don't I can't explain why I didn't do that. Oh whoa. Uh, oh. And then my, my second wife, who was an extremely gifted medium, walked into the bedroom and she stood there next to me and I very, very casually pointed up <laughs> and she very casually nodded her head. Whoa. So I suddenly knew I wasn't insane because my yeah. medium wife was aware of him too. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, wow. now this thing with Jimmy went on for, for weeks, months actually, where, where he and I had direct telepathic communication. But I'm not a medium, so I'm not, I'm not even psychic. So I can't I can't explain how all that happened. Wow. But I began to understand that even if somebody's living in that other realm, it's almost the same as this one. They're temporary. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know what else to say about it. Uh, 
that's it's fascinating in a sense. Yeah. But when I hear people say stuff, there's no you, I, I feel like saying, yeah, there is. It's just not the kind of you you think. <laughs> <laughs> A very different you. <clears throat> yeah. But I know you've had some kind of experience with the, uh, what do you call it, the mystical realm or the uh, psychic realm, whatever it is. I don't know. Yeah, other dimensions, but not nothing ongoing like that. You know, just in, there, there are clusters of like time where, where experiences of that, are, you know, I get, get a few and they're very intense and then a drought, you know, like so... With you, it just sounds, it's just an ongoing thing. It's just very natural to you, so. Well, I've, I've over the last year or so, I've tried to break, that. see, I'm, I'm very, very dependent. I could go through this whole childhood thing about, it. I'm very dependent. Right. So I decided I'm going to stop going to mediums. I'm going to stop getting psychic readings. I'm going to stop trying to get, uh, what I was trying to do was get information and forecasts from my wives. What's okay. going to happen next? What should I do next? <laughs> Very different. Oh, right. okay. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I decided I'm going to stop being dependent and stop relying on, on messages and readings and, <laughs> and forecasts. You know, uh, oh, I mean, I'd, lo okay. I'd love to have them, but on the other hand, I'd rather kind of live in a, in a uh, taking my chances lifestyle, like a taking just whatever will be, will be, instead of what's going to happen. Tell me what's going to happen. But they come around, they, they don't come around with forecasts and warnings and things. Although the other day she did, uh, I, I was supposed to go to this gig, I play saxophone, I was supposed to go to this gig, and right. a guy asked me, he said to me, a friend of mine, he said, bring both your saxophones. And as I was getting ready to go, this, in fact, I was standing outside the house and this, I can't explain it, this urge or this voice or this... Uh, this feeling kept saying, don't, don't, don't bother taking, don't bother taking both of this. So I went back in the house and left the other saxophone there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was one of them telling me, Jim, you don't, you're not going to need all that stuff. Right, okay. So that's kind of how they do it. Uh, like sometimes I get voices, sometimes I get pictures, quite often feelings, just a feeling. Okay. Uh, but it, it's, it's not mysterious or mystical, it's just I don't know how to put it. Um, I kind of appreciate. Oh, they, they had this ability to come around as butterflies. <laughs> oh, okay. <Yeah>. All right. <laughs> and I know it's simple. I always say, hi, honey. I call them by their name. So, hi, Betty. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, so that's kind of what keeps me from, from sinking into the, uh, into the dark recesses of feeling sorry for myself and, uh, you know, what they call it, grief. Okay, uh, but yes, like I don't know what it has what this has to do with non duality. So maybe I should stop talking. <laughs> it's very interesting, though. It's very interesting. Well, thank, thank you, Jim. Oh, let me go to one other point. Uh, a minute ago, I think I was Walter kept saying something about there's no you, there's no you, there's nobody. Oh, wait, oh, Tony Parson was saying, say, there's nobody in this room. Now, based on my personal experience of that, I would say there's nobody in this room, but there is, and then I would add to it, what is in this room? You know, it was the experience I had when, when myself dissolved recently, there was still something here. It wasn't like there was nothing there. It wasn't like Jim died or disappeared. And when that, when that me dissolved, there was still something here. But I can't describe, I would describe it as, as aliveness, presence, consciousness, awareness. I don't know, I don't know what to call it actually, but there was still something here. So to tell people there's no you leaves out, in my opinion, a very significant element. If there's no you, what is there? Well, in my case, though I was still there, but I, I wouldn't know how to describe that I, that me, that self. It was just, you know, I was still there. And so I got off, off my chair where I'm sitting right now, went out and started riding buses around town. Uh, I'm saying I went, I, I, I'm using normal language here. I could say this got up and this went out and started riding buses around town because, because there was no gym there. The gym was gone mm -hmm. since Jim has since come, since come back, <laughs> as you <laughs> can tell. <laughs> if, but, but in the meantime, 
when Jim's gone, there's still something there. What is this something? I honestly can't explain it. Like, I don't know what it is. I wouldn't know how to describe it beyond something alive, something with feeling, something with uh, presence, something with consciousness. But those are just words. Yeah. The, 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 the real word is, I don't know. <laughs> but I know I wasn't gone. I know I didn't die. <clears throat> Thank you, Jim. I have to bring this meeting to a close. We have some oh. more questions uh, in the chat right. that we just can't get to about trauma. I wouldn't, wouldn't even want to ask that uh, with no time to answer it. So if you could uh, bring those next month, we'd be happy to answer them then. Um, so I just want to say thank you, everybody, for coming. Any parting words, Don? No, I enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, shame we didn't. Uh, yeah, see you next month, hopefully. No. Yeah, or actually, uh, there's a live meeting. You want to plug that? If anybody oh, yeah. is in the, in yeah, the London so, area? Yeah, we'll, we'll be um, doing a meeting on Saturday, the 22nd uh, of this month. So next, not this Saturday coming, but the next Saturday. Not right, yeah. And uh, so it's in the Philadelphia Association in Hampstead. Uh, Marty's Yard in North London. If you want, yeah, you can. We've put ads out. Of, I think we're, yeah, there's an ad about it. And also, you can check my meetup if, if you want as well. It's on there. So you can just show up at the door and it's if you like. So, yeah, hopefully, if you're in the London area, come and come and join us and should be should be fun. We'll go out for a social afterwards. And well, yeah, I think that's, <laughs> that's it. That would be great. Well, I look forward to, yes, if, if anybody can make it to that, that would be wonderful. So with that, I'm going to end the meeting. Thank you very much and see you soon.